Hey everyone, I'm back after such a very short time. Uh, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Curse of the Moon 1, as it were. Why take a chance, you know? Nope, I have the wrong thing. <laughs> I slid perfectly into his dangerous zone. Also, Alfred's still dead, so I can't use any of those. Uh, yep, perfect. I don't want the X right now. Oh, fucking God. So the nice thing is that this allows you to rest. And the little pixies too, huh? This just keeps getting better and better. Oh god. Fucking Rudro. This just keeps getting harder. I mean, such is the way that video games typically play out. So yeah, this is um, much like Shovel Knight and other Kickstarter games of the ilk. This is a game designed to be... I uh, almost had it, actually. Wow, I'm kind of impressed. So yeah, normally this would take the life counter down by one, and then we'd all pick up wherever we left off. Well, more or less where we left off. Can I head back down and... Yeah, bust some lanterns? Ah, uh, really? Can I cheese it? Nope, I can't. See, because of Miriam's jump being so good, sometimes you actually overshoot what you're intending to jump. And that's not her fault. Particularly in casual mode, but trading hits as Zangatsu is really effective. Um, in Castlevania 3, stairs are not physical objects. This is going to be difficult because... Oh boy. Oh hey, this will help. It's, I, I hate getting stuck on the little slidey parts. This is a bad start to the episode, huh? So taking any damage in this form at all means that you lose your bat form. So you have to get as much of it as you can before you just plummet. Well, there goes another one. At this point, I might just... Hurl myself off a cliff. In fact, why don't I? Yeah. This is one of those, like, unintentional, um... Like, stratagems that come about because of... Because of, uh, things that were not in the original game. But yeah, the original Castlevania actually had a thing similar to this. You had unlimited lives. Nope, you didn't have unlimited lives. You had limited lives, but you had unlimited continues. Oh, will you come down here, Frogman? Thank you. Oh my god, I'm out. Fine, guess we'll just tank hits and trade. 
Oh, brother. Trying to play smart. This is where it gets me. God, I've lost my beard, the source of my powers. Such a tragedy. See, one of the things about the Axe Knights is that, like, sometimes if you just can't get in, you make no progress. Um, because Gebel does not have any... I never know if it's Jebel or Gebel. I think it's Jebel. Because he has no sub-weapons, you can always pop uh, the special lanterns as him. And all it'll do is just give you more, uh, give you more weapon points. Thank you. All right. Now maybe this will work out. <laughs> much better, much better, much better. This guy really reminds me of an enemy in Shovel Knight. I think I'm starting to notice the... Um, you know, I've just realized the short, quick way leads to a mini-boss... Thank you. The short quick way led to a mini boss. I imagine uh, that the long difficult way might have actually led to some goodies and loot. So maybe I'm a dummy for skipping that way. Uh, I've been playing this game for a bit, but I've only been playing it for so long. Nice. God, this soundtrack is so beautiful. Fuck. I forgot I wasn't Jebel and I wanted the ball and chain. Yeah, one of the nice things about playing as Mr. Gabel is that uh, you often have... You can basically keep the... Uh, perfect. That's just what I wanted. Thank you. Hmm. I have no idea what to do there. Anyway, as Gabelle, you can keep the bat form as, like, a fucking get-out-of-jail-free card. Like, if you bomb... Hip. Like that. Um, I really didn't expect that to work. Well. Got too lucky. God had to, God had to blight me. See, that's the thing, you know? You can keep it as a one-off to help you with a jump that you fucked up. Oh. You can only go up that way if you're playing as Miriam, which means that you might actually have an easier time going this way. Or maybe not. Oh, God. That was just stupid. Uh, let's try this one. The thing about Miriam's jump is that it is fantastic. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Miriam's jump is fantastic, but sometimes it's so good it forces you to, like, overcorrect and overestimate. Ugh, God. Whatever. Starting over now. That's fine. I am A-OK -okay with that. Yeah, the original Castlevania had unlimited continue, so a lot of people... That wasn't even a enemy. That was... I just fucked that up, like, just completely raw. Help me out here, man. I'm slipping. Spent all of my... <laughs> Spent all of my goodies for nothing. Gonna have to get through this stage without Zangetsu. I like the idea of having two tanks as well. 
Like you have to think about your party composition, you know, and maybe not in this way. Oh God, now I have to do this without. Oh brother. Okay, so you can do this, right? In some cases, Alfred's um, Alfred's like little chain, little little shield, will actually block enemies. Perfect. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> Scooby Doo noises live on stream. <laughs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> I got honest to God just like frightened there. I was like, ah. Nice. Oops. So yeah, in Castlevania 3, stairs were, like, stairs had really weird physics. So, like, you couldn't go through stairs. Like, you couldn't jump on stairs. If you're on stairs, you were stuck on them. Like, I'm hitting the space bar now. Let me... You might be able to hear that. Uh, and you can't jump on stairs. Fuck. That was stupid of me. That was really stupid. Of course I would need to... He, did, he, he didn't even make it. He can't make it. He's too, he's too old. <sighs> oh, man. Wait, can I just... I can, in fact. <laughs> yeah, that's the quick way. I wonder if there are... So there's a game mode. I, I mentioned this already, but there's a mode without... Um, not Richter. What's his name? Zangetsu. There's a mode without Zangetsu. It's for difficulty. It's so like, hey, you want to fight, you want to play the game without the, like, primary tank and, like, one of the biggest physical attackers? Well, you can do that. It's difficult, but you can do it. Perfect. Really, huh? That's all right. I've only fought this boss once now that I think of it. Oh, I remember. So he targets the ones that he's... He targets... First, he makes the entire arena unstandable. You know, unable to stand on. And then he shoots those things around. And then he makes it so you can only stand on that one. The thing is, is that he's actually taking an appreciable amount of damage because I'm just soaking up his stuff with a... He's soaking up three shots at a time. All right. Um, I didn't expect to do that. I guess that goes to show you that casual mode means that even a baby like me can beat this game. A big choward. I mentioned this map earlier. In Castlevania 3, the map is you make little choices across it to uh, get through stuff. Oh, yeah. But in Castlevania 1, initially you're going through... Curse the moon. Initially you're going through... 
the area in front of Dracula's Castle, and then you're just going through Dracula's Castle, which is similar to this. So this has the same color palette as Dracula's Castle. Oh boy. Yeah, this game, this this level starts with the same color palette as Dracula's Castle, so it's like, oh hey, look, it's Dracula's Castle, and then the swarm attacks, and the swarm appear to be like a swarm of like bats. Gotta put, we gotta bench you, dude. So yeah, like this is, th this is how they're like, hey. Catch up, dog. Oh god, this this area sucks. Oh right, I forgot. God, this is so frantic. Look at how many there are. Just keeps going, dude. Yeah, look, they're cute. Now we have more as well. Perfect. Good use of a cross. I'm actually going to pause it here. Um... Last one's last episode's the next one. Fuck, that was backwards. Next episode's the last one. I'll see you guys then. Uh, I've been Alfred, um, now beardless. This has been Bloodstained, Curse the Moon. Uh, buy this game yourself. Support the developers. Holy shit, this game's so good. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.